Alright, welcome to another tutorial series on microprocessors and design. In this tutorial, we are going to be having discussions which will ultimately lead us to the design of a microprocessor. This is the outline we've been working with so far and I've made some changes to it. So, instead of designing the ALU first, we are going to be designing the registers first because they are very easy to design and implement. We are no longer going to be designing a memory because memory is basically an array of registers and it's not really an integral part of a CPU. And so we can freely use a RAM provided by Logisim, the simulation software we'll be using. So once we are done with the, with the design of our registers, we move on to the ALU, the control unit, and then we put everything together. All right, so uh, we are going to be designing an 8-bit CPU. And to make things simple, to make the design simple, and to make learning and understanding simple, we are going to support only four operations. First one is moving data, second one is addition, subtraction, and then multiplication. So if we say our CPU is 8 bit, sorry, 8 bit is an 8 bit CPU, what we mean is that it actually operates on 8 bit data. And so for every operation, we are going to need some operands, some operands to work on. How are we going to get this operand? The operand may reside in a register, it may reside in memory. We need to specify where it is. And that is called the addressing mode. So we have register addressing, we have memory addressing, we have immediate addressing. Register addressing is when our operands, or at least one of them, is in a register. And the memory addressing is when we have operands in memory. And then immediate addressing is when an operand is actually part of the instructions. Okay, this will be made clearer. The immediate addressing will be made clearer when we actually start the design and then we start some examples okay and so we want our cpu to support all, all of these three addressing modes the memory register and then the the immediate addressing so in our implementation we are going to support register to register addressing immediate to uh, to register memory to register register to memory so register to register means that two operands can come from registers and then we are going to work on them. And then immediate to register means that one operand can be an immediate value and then the other operand coming from a register. And then memory to register means that memory, sorry, one operand is from memory and then the other operand is a register. Okay. Uh, the format we are going to use is the first one represents the source and then the second one represents the destination. The destination is where the final results will be stored. So in the register to register, uh, results will be stored in the second register. Immediate to register, results will be stored in the register memory. So same thing for all, all of them. So by, in our previous presentation, we learned about the stored program concept and then we, all, we, we learned that instructions can be represented as binary strings and so we are going to take advantage of that to design our instructions. And so inside our, the instruction format we are going to be using, we are using a 20-bit wide instructions. Now, 20 bits, although our CPU is 8 bits, it doesn't mean that we can't have an instruction which is more than 8 bits. 8 bits means that the data we are working on is 8 bits. Okay, so we can have our instructions being wider than 8 bits. So in this implementation, we have chosen 20 bits. Okay, and so we are going to use bit 19 and then bit 18 to encode the operation we are performing. Remember, we are having four operations and to uniquely specify which operation we are interested in, two bits will be sufficient. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then 1, 1. And then we are going to use bit 16 and 17 to encode our addressing mode. Bit 12 to 15 would uh, specify our source, source address 
bit 8 to 11 will specify our destination address where we want to store the final results okay now the source and destination um, can be a bit ambiguous so for instance if we are doing a not operation okay we are not implementing not in this cpu i supposing we are doing a not operation we know that the not operation is an only operator what it means is that it requires only one input and so in that case we have wherever we are going to get that input from is our source and then wherever we are storing the final results is going to be our destination but for operations which require two inputs for instance addition okay it requires two inputs we need to get those two inputs from different locations and so in that case the bit 12 to 15 represents a source address bit 8 to 11 is also a source address because we are getting our operands for, from both of them but then bit 8 to 11 is also our destination address because that is where we intend to store our final results so we will just call it as our destination address although it can serve as a source address for some operations and then bit 0 to 7 will encode an immediate value so supposing we are uh, performing an immediate an immediate addressing immediate addressing means that the value we want to operate on is inside of the instructions itself and so if that is the case then that value will be stored in bit 0 to 7 all right so we are going to encode our operations as, as so our move would be 0 0 add would be 0 1 subtract would be 1 0 multiply 1 1 and then so for the addressing modes okay. register to register immediately to register okay all right so let's see how to interpret uh, instructions at least from what we've designed and so if we see an instruction as 00000011000000 xxx xxx means that it can have any value okay now 00, zero remember we said 00, zero is move okay is the opcode for move and then this zero zero we said is specifying the addressing mode right zero zero is what the addressing mode which is what register to register and so if it is a move and it's a register to register operation it means that we are moving from this register here to this register from the source register to the destination register and so this address here zero zero one one stands for three and so what it means is that we want to move the data and register three to register zero okay now since this move operation is uh, the addressing mode is not an immediate addressing it means that whatever value we have here don't really matter that is why we have xxxx over there okay let's look at another instruction so we have zero one now zero one is for addition okay and addressing mode is still register register okay so what it means is that we want to add the contents of two registers okay so the first register is register number five and then the second register is register number 10 we want to add both of them and store the results in register number 10 okay now see that we are using four bits uh, to address the register to address the registers it means that we can have 16 unique registers okay 16 unique registers now since we will also be using this to address our memory it means that our memory can we can address only 16 unique locations in memory all right now the choice of four was completely arbitrary okay i just decided to choose for you you could make it bigger you could make it smaller if you make it bigger means you can uh, implement more registers if you make it smaller it means you can uh, implement only few registers the reason why i chose four was four gives four gives us the ability to address 16 registers and also 16 memory locations and so in our in our quest to write programs to test our final design we may want we may have to write the program as a sequence of instructions and that that instructions we must have enough memory locations to store them and so if let's see an instruction 
an instruction is divided into let's say 10 sub instructions we should be able to store all these unique instructions in memory so we should have more than 10 memory locations available that's why i choose four but you can choose whatever value you want so this is going to be the block diagram and our reference to the design our design will be based on this block diagram okay. so inside of here you can see we have register array here register one to four we have register b register a now register a is an is an is an input to the alu and then register b is also an input to the alu whatever operations we may want the alu to perform we may first have to move them into register a and then register b and we have this ir here please ir is not infrared this is instructions register now is the register dedicated to storing instructions remember register a b r1 to 4 are all data registers and so they should be 8 bits wide okay they should be 8 bits wide but ir instructions register should be 20 bits wide because our instruction length is short 20. anytime the cpu fetches instructions from memory it stores it in the instructions register so it must have enough uh, bit fields to store all these values and then pc is also pc is a specialized register it's called the program counter and the job of pc is to point to the next location in memory where we need to fetch our instructions from okay and then we have our address buffer here and then data buffer in some other designs the address buffer is called memory address register mar and then the data buffer is also called the memory data register mdr and then their purposes if for instance we want to read a value to memory or a value from memory we send the address we want to read into the address buffer or the memory address register and then the data we intend to put into memory we store it in order the data before the memory data register before it's finally clogged into the ram so that's the idea and then we also have what the control unit over here control unit so you can see that our program counter instructions register and then all of these registers are connected to what the internal bus and even the output of the alu is also connected to what the internal bus so they are all sharing one bus it means that let's say if we have an operation an addition operation we have our values in our register a and then register b once our alu is done with a calculation the result is also going to be on the same bus and therefore we will have to implement mechanisms to prevent collision we have to uh, decide which uh, which component here is going to be putting data on the bus at each and every time and we are going to achieve this using tri-state buffers uh, this will become evident when we start the design section and then this is going to be a reference for the design and implementation of our microprocessor all right so that's all for today hope you enjoyed it if you have any question kindly drop it in the comment section in the next presentation we are going to design our registers thank you very much and take care